deal with airplane peanuts. Is this Joe Rogan's comedy club? Comedy mothership? A lot of people don't understand what's so significant about it. It's like, what's the big deal? He just opened up a club. But it's going to be the first club that I know of. I think it's going to be the first club ever where it's owned by a comedian yeah, yeah. that yes, didn't just open it so he could get stage time. And it don't need to make money. Bro, it's about to be the best club. Joe Rogan's new comedy club, The Comedy Mothership, is finally set to open their doors to the public tomorrow after nearly two and a half years of preparation. Tickets to the club's first round of shows went on sale last Friday and were sold out literally within seconds. Yeah, could you get Joe out here? The Comedy Mothership has two different stage rooms named Fat Man and Little Boy, plus a bar named after comedy store icon Mitzi Shore. Fat Man holds around 240 seats and Little Boy fits about 100. They are probably comparable in size to the OR and belly rooms at the Comedy Store, which is dope. But that also makes me fear that getting a ticket to actually see a show at the Comedy Mothership before they sell out is going to be really difficult for a really long time. I think Rogan's Club might turn into the comedy version of the Sneakers app. We got really good people here. Brought uh, Curtis Nelson and Adam Egit and uh, mm -hmm. you know Eric from the Comedy Store. All these people from the comedy store uh, carry to run the bar. Like I brought mm -hmm. the best people that were at the comedy store. And oh, I just good. Because it, it was during the pandemic, nobody was working. Right. I said, hey, this is what I'm going to do. Do you guys want to work for me? And yeah. so like for the last year and a half, they've been actually like working for free. Like, wow. Why like, they've been getting they've been getting paid. Right. But they haven't working. They're not working. <clears throat> they've just been is, waiting to you're work. You're just holding them. Right. But I kept giving them their full salary. Right. I just said, I, this is not your problem. You know, we right. had a, a, an initial venue that fell apart. Yeah. So we had to buy a second venue. And the second venue required considerable construction. So yeah. I said, listen, this, this is okay. For all the lucky fans that are able to snag some tickets to the Mothership, it sounds like going to a show will be the ultimate comedy club experience. In addition to the lineups being stacked every night, we have Tim Dillon, Ron White, Tom Segura, Christina Przitzky, Tony Hinchcliffe, David Lucas, William Montgomery, Hans Kim. Joe Rogan spared no expense when it came to opening this club. He started off by hiring all of the best people that worked at the comedy store to come work for him in Austin, including his new president of operations, Adam Egit. Joe also mentioned that he'll be providing a service to lock audience members' phones during the show, which usually makes for a better all-around performance, and even Louis C.K. had a helping hand in giving Joe some pointers on building the ultimate comedy club for comedians. You at one point in time thought about opening up a comedy club? Yeah, because you're opening one here. Yeah, you thought about it? When? When I saw the Babe Ruth movie with John Goodman. Did you ever see that movie? No. He played Babe Ruth, mm -hmm. and I don't know how much truth there is in it, but he wanted to manage a ball team and uh, he John Goodman was such a good actor and he does this moment where he says I just want to I love the guys I want to take care of the guys I want to be the guy who looks after them and and you know trains them and you know and, and makes sure they're okay because he just loved ball players and I thought of I watched him do that and I thought that's how I feel about comedy the location of Rogan's Club is right in the heart of Austin's comedy scene on 6th Street in the former Ritz Theater. There's an entire history of the building on the Comedy Mothership website that's really interesting. It goes all the way up to present day where it reads, In 2022, the building was bought by comedian, podcaster, and commentator Joe Rogan. During the following year, the building was renovated under the design of Austin architect Richard Wise to turn it into the Comedy Mothership, a stand-up comedy nightclub destination. Fulfilling a dream and vision Joe Rogan had of providing a comedy community here in Austin that will draw comics from all around the world. If it was Joe Rogan's dream to form a comedy community in Austin that would draw in comics from all around the world, it's definitely coming true. On top of all the other great comedians Joe's already recruited to Texas, it's now been officially confirmed by Joe himself that none other than the Rat King Theo Vaughn is on his way to town. Theo moved to Nashville, Theo Vaughn. But oh, now, is there a comedy scene there? A little bit. A little bit? A little bit, you know, but like there's Nate Bargatze who's fantastic, he's there. But uh, Theo's gonna move here now, so it's like he's excited about it too. And if that wasn't enough, it's now being speculated that the number one live comedy podcast in the world, Kill Tony, will be adding a second weekly show every Thursday at the Comedy Mothership. It's exciting because it's new. Mm -hmm. And all these young people that come here and they do Kill Tony. Kill Tony twice a week is going to be huge. It's huge for them, obviously. Doing double the amount of shows is going to be huge for their growth. It's going to be huge for Joe Rogan's Comedy Club, getting to host them every single week. And it's going to be huge for the already thriving scene of young comedians in Austin that will now get a chance to be seen by the hundreds of thousands thousands of Kill Tony fans twice as often. The first Kill Tony episode to be recorded at the Mothership will be on Monday, March 13th in The Fat Man. I feel like Austin is maybe not third place, but in that top three now. What is it like just a normal week um, comedy scene here? 
It's amazing. I mean, Joe Rogan flies out, Mark Norman, Ari Shafir, Shane Gillis. They come here a lot. Tom Segura lives here. Tim Dillon has a house here. Uh, some of the best comedians in the world mm -hmm. are on that Joe Rogan show. It's become really, really a good place for comedy. And with the Rogan Club opening up, it'll only get better. The Legion of Skanks YouTube channel was removed again by YouTube last week. The Skanks shared the bad news on Twitter saying, quote, Sadly, YouTube has removed our channel. We'll be appealing the removal and hopefully be back soon. But right now, the only place to find our video content is at gasdigitalnetwork.com. There's yet to be any official reasoning given for why the channel was deleted. I think at first we all just assumed that YouTube was trying to censor the Legion of Skanks based off their style of comedy. But the people of Reddit seemed to be pretty convinced it was because of an error made by one of the producers who allegedly left porn running on one of their streams. If this isn't just Lewis trying to trick people into using the guest digital website it really sucks that youtube took down their channel hopefully the appeal goes well hopefully it'll be back up soon but for now i guess we just have to wait and see guest spots from last week your mom's house had on chelsea lynn two bears one cave was burt and howie mandel kill tony tonight is with roseanne barr flagrant had on charlemagne mark norman was the guest on stavi's world chris o'connor was on matt and shane's secret podcast chris stefano was on the blocks podcast and chris stefano was on bad friends with bobby lee here's what's going to happen for the for the time on this podcast because i'm i'm going to be andrew santino but i'm going to be a little bit different and the key difference is guess what i'm going to be the andrew santino who isn't mean to you i'm going to be the andrew santino who's nice to you Holy and who shit. doesn't have a, a compilation of, of 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 him yelling at you on the podcast which i don't support i'm going to be nice to bobby lee yeah well i can i just say this yes is um you don't have the ability to do it even if you wanted to because i don't have that in me you're a softy i'm a soft and he's mean yeah you're gay <laughs> This past weekend with Theo Vaughn had on Logic. The Joe Rogan Experience talked with Russell Brand. Whiskey Ginger had on Michael Pena. David Cross was on The Honeydew. Ryan Hansen was on Take Your Shoes Off with Rick Glassman. Ari Shafir was on We Might Be Drunk. Colin Quinn was on You Know What Dude with Robert Kelly. Brian Quinn was on Are You Garbage? And Chris Stefano was on the Joke World Comedy News Update last week. We interviewed him on this show. So yeah. As far as new stand-up specials go, maybe the most anticipated special of all time took place on Saturday, March 4th. Chris Rock's Selective Outrage was live streaming from Netflix's website. It was the same night as a stacked UFC card, so many fans were split on what to watch. But for those who tuned into Netflix who saw Chris Rock doing his thing live, Holy shit, what a show. Of course, now everyone's talking about how Chris Rock utterly dismembered Will and Jada in the funniest way possible in front of everyone live, which is great. But it should be known that the entire special start to finish is world class. Every joke was hitting so hard and you could just tell Chris Rock was pumped to be there doing this live on Netflix for the first time. The live aspect was really cool. It made it feel like you were almost watching a sporting event at times, but it was comedy. Usually a special for Netflix would be shot like three different times and then edited for months. This was raw footage. It felt real. It felt like being at the show and there was really no technical difficulties maybe two or three stutters i think chris messed up one joke towards the end but overall it was definitely a success and i have a feeling netflix is going to want to replicate this model with more comedians moving forward well that does it for this week's joke world comedy update as always thank you so much for watching this video and we'll be back again next monday with some more comedy news let me know in the comments what you think of kill tony doing two episodes a week i think that's going to be huge i think it's going to be dope i think a lot of cool shit's about to happen in austin and around the comedy mothership joe rogan if you're watching this i would like a job there please I could be I could be in charge of the phones. I could hold the phones during the show. I could I could clean the mothership. Whatever the mothership needs, I will do. I already got the outer space comedy theme going. I don't know. Could be the move, Joe. Let me know. Turn on the posties, post notifications, the posties, the post maloners, because we got two more videos, maybe three coming out this week that you're not gonna want to miss. See you later.